Hey there, let's take a cool journey through San Marino and check out its most awesome spots in this video. Ever wondered about the old castle on Mount Titano or the cool hidden stuff in Borgia Maggiore? It's time to jump in and discover all the amazing things waiting for us. So our first place is Rocca Gaeta. The oldest of the three fortresses on Mount Titano, it overlooks the city of San Marino at the base of its walls. Erected in the 11th century, this fortress had various roles, including serving as a prison. It underwent multiple reconstructions and took its current shape during the 15th century conflict between San Marino and the House of Malatesta. While reaching the tower requires some effort, the panoramic vistas of the nearby landscape from its high vantage point make the climb worthwhile. Moving on to second place, Mesa di Stato National Museum. The impressive National Museum, located in the historic Palazzo Pergami Baluzzi, showcases a wide range of archaeological collections, starting with artifacts from the Neolithic age and extending to discoveries from the Etruscan and Roman eras. The diverse assortment of ancient artworks isn't limited to Italy alone, it encompasses Egyptian artifacts, Byzantine icons, 17th century paintings and even antique coins from San Marino. The museum's nearly 5,000 items, many of which were contributed in the 19th century by Italian intellectuals and political figures, reflect their admiration for the small republic. Next up is the Convent and Art Gallery of San Francisco. Constructed in 1400, it offers a captivating experience with its exquisite courtyard and an impressive display of artworks. The former church now serves as an art museum, showcasing a variety of pieces. Within the sacred art segment of the museum, you'll find creations from various former Franciscan churches, encompassing paintings on both canvas and wood, furnishings, and other objects that vividly depict the enduring history and impact of the Franciscan order in San Marino. Meanwhile, the art gallery segment is renowned for its assortment of 16th century paintings, featuring masterpieces by notable artists like Raphael, Gersino, and Gerolamo. The church's walls also incorporate the massive Porta di San Francesco, a grand gateway that serves as a primary entrance to the city. The fourth place we have for you today is Fartano. Fartano Situated among the nine communes comprising the castles of San Marino was once a segment of neighbouring Rimini, Italy. However, in the 15th century, it became integrated into San Marino. This peaceful corner of San Marino, home to slightly more than a thousand residents, attracts tourists who come to admire the church of San Paolo Apostolo and the charming town hall. Tourists have the opportunity to enjoy a serene day strolling through Faitano's narrow streets, immersing themselves in the local ambience and savouring the regional cuisine and wines. Moving on to the next place, Borgio Maggiore. Borgio Maggiore has its origins as a quiet village and has evolved into a contemporary town now among the largest residential zones in San Marino. Renowned for its street markets, held every Thursday from early morning until around 2pm, Borgio Maggiore boasts its most prominent feature. These markets, dating back to the 13th century when Borgia Maggiore was previously known as Mercatel, have a rich history. By visiting, you're engaging in shopping within a locale with an extensive and honourable heritage. While these markets once dealt in livestock, today they predominantly offer fresh local produce, household goods and regional arts and crafts. And the second last place is Mount Titano. In addition to the main street leading to the tower, there are several noteworthy walking paths that lead you through picturesque and verdant forests, providing an alternate perspective of the bustling town centre below. Along the mountainside, you will come across weathered stone benches that offer an ideal resting spot while you soak in the vistas. Mount Titano, visible at an elevation of 750 metres above sea level, offers crisp and invigorating mountain air, which means you should anticipate cooler temperatures compared to the lower regions of the state and plan accordingly. Without a doubt, this is one of the finest tourist destinations in San Marino. And the last one is the Coin and Stamp Museum. For stamp enthusiasts worldwide, San Marino is synonymous with exquisite stamps and collectors of philately can enjoy a comprehensive collection housed within the church in Borgia Maggiore. Over the years, the Republic has consistently produced commemorative series that collectors treasure. 
and that contribute significantly to San Marino's financial resources. In addition to the stamps issued by the Republic since the mid-19th century, there are also icons, a venture that San Marino embarked upon in 1862. Even after adopting the euro, San Marino continues to produce a limited quantity of gold coins for numismatists, although these are considered legal tender exclusively within San Marino's borders. This marks the end of this video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure that you like and share it. Guys, let us know your favorite place in the video in the comment section. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching the video and we'll see you at the next one.